Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to thank the organizers for the invitation and the Fields Institute. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, the talks have been very nice, and uh, also this is my first time in Canada, so I'm very happy that Toronto is beautiful, so thank you. Um, so today I'll tell you about the Calabi problem for Connell trifolds. So the Calabi problem <coughs> uh, was uh, advertised by Calabi in his ICM talk in, in 1954. So I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm very sad that I have to report that uh, Eugenio Calabi uh, passed away a few weeks ago at the age of uh, 100. So uh, I take this opportunity to also to honor his uh, great mathematics and uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, so the Calabi problem asks uh, which compact complex varieties admit a Kähler-Einstein metric. So I will, uh, if you don't know what a Kähler-Einstein metric is, I will explain this. So the, this is the plan of the talk. So first I will uh, give an overview of the Calabi problem since its origins in differential geometry all the way to some of the recent developments connected to case stability and some tools in birational geometry. Then I will concentrate on, on birational geometry in which new tools have been introduced and that allow us to, uh, to solve part of the, the Calabi problem for funnel threefold. So this is the plan. So let's start with the, with the Calabi problem. So let me, uh, let me start with some very uh, basic review of uh, Riemannian geometry. So in Riemannian geometry one, um, Start, studies a, a Riemannian manifold. So this is a smooth manifold M together with a metric uh, G on it. And with this metric, we can measure uh, angles and distance, and we can introduce the notion of a curvature. So uh, let me remind you some of this, uh, talking about curvature. So for instance, for a, a, the Gaussian curvature uh, of, a, of a compact or of a, of a smooth uh, surface, uh, gives us already this trichotomy that, that Mori told us about yesterday. So here we have the, the negative curvature, a picture of a surface with negative curvature at, at the point, and then the flat curvature and the negative curvature. And so this trichotomy will also be carried over to, um, to, to birational geometry later. And, uh, but still in Riemannian geometry, let me also mention the notion of parallel transport that, uh, so with a, once you have a Riemannian metric, you have also this notion of parallel transport that allow us to transport, uh, translate a vector along the curve uh, so that it, it remains parallel. Okay, so now let me uh, move to the, I, I want to, to, to explain what the Kähler-Einstein metric is. So let me first, uh, introduce the, the, the Kähler metric, the Kähler condition. So here we are studying, we are working with a compact complex manifold of dimension M. So this is, a, this is the same thing as a smooth manifold, but now the, the, the atlas, the charts are given in terms of open subsets of CM instead of RM. And the transition functions now are required to be um, holomorphic. Now one way to encode this complex structure is to, at each, at each tangent point of your manifold, you can consider the multiplication by i. And so this gives us, at, in, the, in the tangent bundle, this gives us this map, this linear map, uh, j, whose square is minus the identity. So normally, so often this is called the almost complex uh, structure. And this is a very a convenient way to encode the complex structure of x. And so now we have this complex structure, this, this, uh, this linear map on the tangent bundle. And now I can define a Kähler metric on X. So a Kähler metric on X is just a Riemannian metric on X, now viewed as a, a real manifold of dimension 2M. But that I request that I require that this Riemannian metric is compatible with the complex structure. So this means, um, so this, this means first that the, that the metric is, um, is, um, is invariant if I multiply the, uh, if I use the, the map J, if I multiply by J, and also, and this is what is really meaningful, is that we require that, the, uh, the, the, that this complex uh, multiplication um, commutes with parallel transport. 
And so this is the notion of a Taylor metric and uh, a compact complex manifold may or may not admit uh, a Taylor metric. And when it does, we call it a Taylor manifold. A Taylor manifold is a complex, compact complex. Uh, so for us, we will always be looking at the compact case. So this is a compact complex manifold that admits a Taylor metric. Okay, so um, let me give you, start giving you some examples. So for instance, the complex projective space is a Kähler manifold. So it has what is called the Cubini Studi metric. And if you restrict this metric to any complex, to any projective submanifold, you get that the complex projective manifolds. Uh, so this will always give us a, a, a Kähler metric. And so this any, any algebra, projective algebraic variety over the complex will have a um, Kähler metric. Um, however, if a Kähler manifold admits a Kähler metric, it in fact admits many Kähler metrics, there is an infinite dimensional space of possible Kähler metrics on X, and then one can ask if there is a canonical or some canonical uh, Kähler metric that we can put on X. And so this is uh, what will motivate the definition of a Kähler Einstein metric. Okay, so let, let's look at the, the simplest example in dimension one. So if I have a complex, uh, a compact complex manifold of dimension one, this is nothing but a, a compact Riemann surface. And we have this usual trichotomy that can be given, for instance, in terms of the genus, genus zero, genus one, and, and higher genus. And of course, if you give me any such complex uh, manifold, I can put many Kähler metrics on it, however, uh, for any metric that I choose, the curvature is, is determined from the genus. So this is the, the famous Gauss-Bonnet theorem that says that the average of the curvature of X um, will, is, 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 can be given in terms of the genus. So this trichotomy here is again reflected by this trichotomy of the curvature. And, uh, and it turns out as a, as a consequence of the, the Poincaré uniformization theorem, we see that X admits a unique Kähler metric with constant Gauss curvature. So this is the metric that for us would be the canonical metric that we want to put on, on such a Riemann surface. And now let's move to, to higher genus, sorry, to higher dimensions. And for that, it will, I, I, it's, it's convenient to introduce the Kähler two form. So now if you have any compact complex manifold, um, if I put, if I give a Riemannian metric to X, then I can cook up a, a real uh, positive definite two form omega. So this is constructed, you see that this is constructed from the metric and the complex structure. And, and conversely, from this, from, from a Kähler, what we call a Kähler uh, form, we can recover the, the Riemannian metric. And now in, in terms of this form, the Kähler condition being compatible with, uh, with the Riemannian metric, the complex structure being compatible with the Riemannian metric can be written in a very sim simple way. It just asks that the form is closed. And so when this is the case, we call it a Kähler form. And, and in this case, notice that if I have a Kähler two form, so because it is closed, it will define a cohomology class, uh, they run cohomology class. And this, uh, this class, um, so there, you can choose different Kähler forms and different, they, they will give different, different classes. But one other thing that you can do, once you have the form, you can look at the, the curvature true form. So this is the, the true form that, that computes the curvature of the, um, of the manifold. And again, this is another closed form. But, and then so this, if I take its class, I get another cohomology class associated to, to X. And, but now what is, uh, what is very important is that this, uh, the, this class of the Ricci curvature, that does not depend on the original uh, Kähler form omega. So this is, I think also Mori told us this yesterday. So this is the anti-canonical up to a scaling. This is just the anti-canonical class of our um, projected compact, pro compact complex uh, manifold. Okay, so now uh, I can introduce the notion of Kähler Einstein metric. So you, you start with a Kähler manifold and we look at its Ricci uh, curvature uh, form. And uh, we say that a metric is Kähler Einstein if this Ricci curvature true form 
is a constant multiple of the original matrix omega. And then by rescaling, we can, we can, uh, we can um, require that this, this multiple is either minus one, zero, or one. And then the problem that Calabi advertised in his ICM talk was uh, which compact Taylor manifolds admit a Taylor Einstein metric. So um, if there is a Kähler Einstein metric, then it is well essentially unique, and so this this is a canonical metric in in, in a sense. And now um, let me remind you that the 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 class, the De Rang class of this uh, Ricci curvature tensor is just the anti-canonical class. And because we are requiring that it is a multiple of the of the form of the um, of the the Taylor metric, which is positive definite, we have easily a necessary condition for the existence of a Taylor metric, which is that the, anti -can the canonical class has a definite sign. So this is a necessary condition for the existence of a Taylor Einstein metric, either the canonical class is always positive or, uh, or numerically trivial or the anti-canonical class is, is positive. So this is uh, what we call the canonically polarized varieties, Calabi type varieties, and and funnel varieties. So this is the, the also the trichotomy from the from the that comes from the minimal model program. And uh, so the fo so let, let's uh, let's look at each one of these classes. So for the first two, the Calabi problem has been has been answered. So uh, so first of all, the Al proves that the, that the, um, that if the canonical class is numerically trivial, then X always admits a Taylor Einstein metric. And then shortly later, uh, independently, Oban and Yao show that, show this, that the same holds for uh, varieties with positive canonical class, so they also admit Taylor Einstein metric. However, for funnel varieties, the situation is much more subtle, and the funnel varieties may or may not admit a Taylor Einstein metric. So a necessary condition. Um, so this was observed very early by Matsushima, is that if, if a funnel variety admits a Kähler Einstein metric, then its automorphism group is uh, reductive. So this will allow us to construct, easily construct examples of uh, funnel manifolds without a Kähler Einstein metric. So let me give you some, some of these examples. So some positive examples of funnel manifolds with Kähler Einstein metric. So again, the projective space, the Covini Studi metric is an example of a Kähler Einstein metric. And more generally, uh, any rational homogeneous space admits a Kähler Einstein metric. And now some non examples. So uh, using Matsushima's obstruction, we can easily cook up funnels without a Kähler Einstein metric. So for instance, you can take the blow up of T2 in one or two points. So the automorphism groups of these uh, of these surfaces are very well known, and you see that they have this GA factor there, so they are non-reductive, and so they do not have Kähler Einstein metric. So maybe this is a good time to talk about um, uh, at the start, you know, going a little bit into birational geometry and talk about classification of del peso surfaces. So these are the funnel uh, manifolds in, in dimension two. These are called del peso surfaces. And they're classically uh, classified. So you have T2, T1 cross T1, and then the blow up of T2 in at most eight points in general position. So this, um, so they, from those, the two that have a non-reductive automorphism group are exactly the blow up of uh, T2 in one or two points. So all the others have reductive uh, automorphism group. And, um, and, it was a now it was proved by so this was a series of papers uh, mostly by by Tiam and Yao that they they showed that the Matsushima's obstruction is the is the only obstruction in dimension two, so they classify the del peso surfaces that admit a Kähler Einstein metric. So we have the two in red that don't admit a Kähler Einstein metrics, and all the others do. So this is a this actually I should say that the last the last paper, this is, is the one by Tian, in, it is a paper in Inventiones of uh, 70 pages. So this is a very difficult analysis. So I do not want to get into the analytic tools, but I want to tell you a little bit of, of, some, of the, some of the analytic tools because this is going to be important for people to, uh, to appreciate the notion of uh, case stability. So let me just mention that, okay, so we start with the Kähler manifold 
And as I said, there are infinitely many um, Kähler metrics on X. So this is how the differential geometry writes this, this space. So this is called the space of Kähler potentials. So these are, this, this give you all the Kähler metrics that define the same homology class of the fixed one omega. And this is an infinite dimensional space. This can be also given uh, a structure of a, 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 um, <clears throat> a differential uh, um, um, hyperbolic uh, space. And, uh, and on this space, you can define a certain functional, which is called the Mabuchi functional, uh, in, in, this, in this infinite dimensional space that captures the notion of a Kähler Einstein metric. So a Kähler Einstein metric will correspond to a minimizer for the Mabuchi functional. So this is a little bit of the, the analytic uh, ideas that go into proving that something has or does not have a Kähler Einstein metric. Now, let me introduce now this notion of case stability. So Christine told us a little bit about this um, yesterday. Uh, so, so this is, so we fix the funnel. So this is a tool that at, at least for, for now, I will introduce it for just for funnel varieties. So uh, if you have a funnel variety, we can, uh, if we, fi we fix a funnel variety X, uh, and let me introduce the notion of a test configuration. Well, a test configuration, well, it consists of a lot of data. So let me explain it uh, slowly. So first of all, it is a family, say, parameterized over, over, the, over the complex line, such that for every, for every point different than zero, the fiber is your given funnel variety X. So the, the every fiber except zero is the same, it's our X. But then over the special point, you can have some degenerate, some, some other, other variety. And this, I, I, I drew it like very nicely and irreducible, but it can be in principle uh, reducible and have, uh, can be very bad singularity, so it can be anything. Um, and then this, I just ask that this is a flat, uh, flat morphism. So, uh, then I also want uh, this L there is, is give it, so this is, this is going to be a relatively ample uh, line bundle on this, uh, on this families that restricts to some multiple of the anti-canonical on X. So you should think of this um, as, as maybe some embedding in some big uh, projective space. And then this family also comes with a C star action so that this, this map is uh, equivariant. So that C star is acting the natural way on the, on the line, and we ask that it uh, acts on X uh, equivariantly. So this is what we call a, a test configuration. And now I can, uh, then we have a notion of the donaldson Kotaki invariant of a test configuration. So this can be defined, so this was originally defined in terms of the weights of this action. And, but it, it, it was later reinterpreted as a, as, a, as a certain product of cohomology classes. So just so that, you know, I don't do this thing of not saying what the case stability is. So this is a formula for it. So once you, once you compactify it to P1, this is one way to define this, uh, define precisely this donaldson kotaki invariant. But maybe what is most important to know is that what, what does this mean? So as I said, we had this uh, the the this space of uh, of Kähler potential. So if you have such a family, if you think of this, if you if this is embedded in some projective space, what you can do is you can pull back from this projective space the Fubini student metric, and then this will give a this will give you a metric on on X. So on the on the space of Kähler potentials, this will give you an infinite ray, and what this Donaldson Kotaki invariant is. Is, is nothing but the limit at infinity of the derivative of the Mabuchi functional. So this is why this is related to the existence of Kähler Einstein metric. Okay, so um, again, so we have now, I will now finally define what, what is case stability. So you have, we have a task configuration, you're given a task configuration. And then we say that X, that the, fun, the original funnel variety is case stable if for every non-trivial test configuration, the donaldson kotaki invariant is positive, it is k semi-stable if it is, uh, for every test configuration, it is non-negative, non and it is k polystable if for every non-trivial con uh, test configuration, the donaldson kotaki invariant is non-negative, and moreover, 
it is zero if and only if the central fiber is isom also isomorphic. Uh, the special fiber is also isomorphic to X. So as I, as I said, this Donaldson Fotak invariant is, is, uh, is the limit at this infinite ray of the, the derivative of the Mabuchi functional. So it's not surprising. Uh, okay, so sorry, this is, this is a, some easy implications from the definition. So stable implies K polystable and semi-stable which implies semi-stable. And as I said, uh, if X admits a Kähler Einstein metric, then the Mabuchi functional has a minimum, and therefore uh, one can show that X is polystable. So this is sort of a, a, a sort of natural to, to uh, natural implication. And what was conjectured by Yao, Tian, and Donaldson is that the converse holds that X admits a Kähler Einstein metric if and only if X is K polystable. So now this, this conjecture is now a, a theorem. Um, and, and so this is what, is what is important here is that the existence of a Kähler Einstein metric is an, an analytic condition. And then K, K polystability is an, an algebraic geometric condition. And then it, and, and what is striking here is that this, the, this uh, the existence of this metric can be captured by you know, purely algebraic notion. And, and this is how sort of algebraic geometry got into this. And, uh, and now I'm going to take a break here. So this is, uh, I'll take a break at this, uh, at this uh, Chen Donaldson, Sun and Tian's uh, theorem, this, this equivalence. And I will go now to, into birational geometry and just review. So I would just um, now apologize for the experts. I will just uh, do a quick review of some notions in birational geometry and the minimum model program. And then I will explain how these tools can be used to study um, K stability. Okay, so let me uh, recall the classification problem, the birational classification problem in, <clears throat> in algebraic geometry. So the first, so the first st step is given a projective variety to find a simplest representative of X in its birational class. So this is what we call the minimal model, or could also be a more fiber space, but let me, for simplicity, let me call this a minimal model. And then as a second step, uh, we construct, once we identify the simplest representative in each birational class, we construct and describe modelized spaces of this minimal model, maybe with some fixed uh, invariance. So the first step, so actually, the first, so the first step is achieved uh, by the minimal model program, and so given, so given a projective variety, we will want to find the simplest representative in its birational class. So in dimension two, this is a, this is a classical algebraic geometry. So this was developed by the Italian school in the early 20th century. And in this case, it's very simple. What you have is that the operations to get to a simplest representative is very, just a very simple, this is called the, the blow up. So, uh, so in a, in a blow up, you blow up a surface, you remove that point, you replace it by all the tangent directions at this point. And, and, and then conversely, if you're given any surface, you can, uh, you can do a sequence of these blow downs until you get to, uh, to a surface, which we call a minimal surface that, that does not admit on the other blow down. And this is, uh, and, and this is the minimal model. Now, this, was, uh, this is for surfaces. Now, of course, for in dimension three, this is much harder. And this was, uh, this was proved by, by Mori in 1988. Well, it was, wor it was work a lot of people, a lot of people worked on this, but it was finalized and was concluded by Mori in, this, in 1988. And in higher dimensions, there is still some, uh, it has not been fully proved, but there has been great advancements in uh, this paper of Birkar, Tashini, Haken, McKernan, uh, which now uh, we have this tool that works in many important uh, situations. So as a conjectural consequence of the minimal model program, we have that every projective variety can be constructed from these three classes. So again, we see this three, um, th this trichotomy of the curvature showing up, uh, canonically polarized varieties, calabi type varieties, and funnel varieties. So I also want to make a remark. So Alex mentioned this in his talk yesterday that for varieties with a numerically trivial canonical class, we have the boville bogomolov decomposition. And, uh, and, and the, the, the reason why I am mentioning this is that 
if you look at the proof of the bovil bogoma of the composition, one of the first uh, key, one of the first tools that is used is exactly the existence of a Kähler Einstein metric. So this is the, the existence of a Kähler Einstein metric by Yao is uh, proved in the in an analytic way, but it has also some important consequences in algebraic geometry. So this is one of the important one of the, the tools that are used to prove the to prove this theorem. Okay, so now um, we see that we had to wait several decades from the from the MMP from surfaces to to threefolds, and one of the reasons that there are some 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 new um, some new features in higher dimension, and one of them is that singularities are unavoidable. And then, um, and then for several to, for several decades, people worked on the, what are the, the correct notions of singularities. And now we have this notions of singularities of pairs: so terminal, canonical, uh, KLT, log canonical. And uh, and let me so let me just remind you what uh, what the notion of KLT is. So let me introduce the, the log discrepancy, and this is going to be also important for case stability. So if you have any birational morphism, so you start with your given variety X, um, and then for if you take a birational morphism and a prime divisor on Y. So you can think of this as some the exceptional divisor of some blow up, for instance. And then you define the log discrepancy of this divisor to be one plus the order of vanishing of the relative uh, canonical class. Um, so, for instance, if you start with a surface and you blow up a point, the way that you measure this is you take a form, uh, you take a, a true form on your surface that is regular at this point, and then you pull it back, and then you will notice that it will pick up a zero of order one. So, in this case, this log discrepancy is going to be is going to be zero, and then we can define the notion of KLT singularity. So, an, an, a, a Variety X is at his KLT singularity. If for any birational morphism and for any prime divisor on on Y, the discrepancy is the log discrepancy is uh, is non-negative. And now I can define this notion of uh, Q found varieties. And so these are some of some of the possible outcomes of the minimal model program. So this is a projective variety such that the anti-canonical class is ample just the usual final manifold, but now I allow it to be singular, and, but it, I ask that it has at worst uh, KLT singularities. And, and now this, let me just uh, state this theorem of Li Shu, and this, maybe this is one of the first uh, theorems that show the connection between uh, birational geometry and K-stability. So they prove that when you test, you want to test K-polystability, uh, for a test configuration, it is enough to consider special test configuration. So that means that it is, it is enough to check this for test configuration for which the special fibers are q funnel varieties. And now let me explain uh, uh, evaluative criteria. Uh, evaluative, so there are several evaluative criteria. I will explain one to check uh, stability. So again, we have... Uh, we have the notion of lack discrepancy. And let me introduce now the expected vanishing order associated to, uh, to a prime divisor. So this is just this integral. So I, I won over the kx, the, the, vo the volume of kx, and then I take this integral from zero to infinity of this volume of this modified uh, divisor. So I write this as an infinite uh, in uh, integral, but however, this is in fact a finite, so um, so this is what we call the, the pseudo-effective threshold of x, of x, so eventually this will not be pseudo-effective anymore, this, this divisor here will not be pseudo-effective, and so the volume is going to be zero, and so we only have to integrate it um, up to this uh, pseudo-effective threshold. And the Fujita-Li uh, criterion says that uh, x is a k semi-stable if and only if the log discrepancy is always greater or equal than the expected vanishing order for every divisor e lying on any model uh, over x. So of course this is uh, this is something that seems very hard to check because you have to check it for every divisor if you want to show that something is uh, semi-stable. Uh, however, this is a very very convenient uh, criterion to show that something is not 
uh, k Pauli's table. Because if you find one divisor that by, for which this, uh, this inequality is violated, then your variety cannot have, uh, cannot be semi-stable, so not k Pauli stable, and so not admit a Taylor Einstein metric. So this, so this is a useful way to show that something is, does not admit a Taylor Einstein metric. Um, and also, okay, there are some other criteria that will allow us to prove that something admits a Taylor Einstein metric. Maybe I'll discuss some of it a little bit later. Um, and another, I, I also want to discuss um, the, how K stability varies in family. So this is also some, so this results are in the last five years or so. So if you take a family, say of Q funnel varieties, then if you look, so this is a series of theorems by Bloom Yu, Bloom Yu Chu, and Bloom Chu. Um, so this, if you look at the, the set in T parametrizing stable, uh, Q funnel varieties, then this set is open. And the same thing for uh, the set of uh, parameters parametrizing K semi-stable uh, Q funnels. And those, uh, the set parametrizing uh, K polystable uh, members is constructible. And also something that is going to be important for us is the, is the uniqueness of uh, K polystable gen the generation. So if you have a a K polystable, um, a family of K polystable funnel varieties, you know, with some special, uh, with some special K polystable limit, then this limit, this is unique. So this is related to the uh, to the properness of the moduli space of um, of um, K of uh, K polystable funnel varieties, and I think we will hear more about this uh, in, the, in the coming days. And so this, uh, so let me mention this, this was a very nice uh, conference. So this was my, the last conference before the pandemic for me. So this was the conference on case stability and related topics at the American Institute of uh, Mathematics that took place in January, 2020. Uh, and then in, in, in this conference in the afternoon, people were gathering in groups to work on, on some specific problems. And then, uh, and then some of us uh, got together and we decided to, to address the Calabi problem for funnel threefolds. So which three-dimensional funnel threefolds admit a Kähler Einstein metric? So some, so some of us started to work on this in this conference. And then, uh, and then, then I'm going to address now what, we, what we've done so far. So let me introduce my, uh, my collaborators. So this is what I call the funnel team. So this is myself, uh, Ana Maria Kastrovet, Ivan Chestov, uh, Kento Fujita, Ansofia Kalogiros, uh, Jesus Martinez Garcia, Konstantin Shremov, uh, Hendrik Schuss, and Nivedita Vigvanathan. So we started this project at this AIM workshop, and so now I'm going to tell you uh, what we've, what we've uh, accomplished. Okay, so this is, so we want to, to address the Calabi problem for funnel threefolds. So the first thing that I should tell you is that um, the, uh, there is a classification of three-dimensional funnel varieties. So this was due to Skovsky and Mori Mukai. And there are 105 uh, deformation families of, uh, of funnel threefolds. And if you, if you haven't seen it, there is this very nice uh, webpage called the Phonography where you can find a list of this 105 uh, funnel threefolds with a very explicit description of, uh, of each of them. So actually I use it a lot. So, um, so there is, so they're, they're, they're classified and they're well understood and very well described. And so what we want to do is to answer, to understand which funnel varieties admit a killer Einstein metric. So as I told you, the, 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 the classification for surfaces was, was finished by, by Tian in 1990. And in the, in the surface case, for each family, either all members had a killer Einstein metric or no member had a killer Einstein metric. Now for threefolds, it's already different. So this was known very early on that there are deformation families that simultaneously contain members that admit killer Einstein metrics and members that do not admit killer Einstein metrics. So the, so the situation here is more, much more complicated. So let me divide the problem into, into, into parts. So the first part, in the first part, we want uh, to understand for, we, for each of the 105 families, 
uh, we want to determine whether the general member admits a Taylor Einstein metric, not every member. As I, as I said, the set parametrizing um, K polis table funnels, this is a constructible sense, so uh, the constructible set, so this, uh, this, so this makes sense. And then maybe after we've done this, we can really, for each family, determine which member, uh, which members, exactly which members admit the Kähler Einstein metric. And then after that, with, uh, with, this, uh, <clears throat> with this amazing uh, new theory of uh, modelized spaces for a uh, K polis table, um, something that you may want to do is to, for each of this family, for which the general member admits a Kähler Einstein metric, you want to describe the modelized space and in particular the k-polis table, the generations of your funnel. So this is this would be like the complete problem that we what we want to do for uh, for threefolds. But uh, what we've uh, worked on is in the, just this first part of the problem to determine um, whether the general member admits a Kähler Einstein metric or not. Um, since then, uh, there has been some progress in the also in the second. Uh, in the second problem, so many, so for, for, for some of the families, we actually determined exactly which members had Kähler Einstein metric, but uh, for others, this was left open. And then some of them were completed by other people later, but I think some, some, some cases are, are still uh, unknown. And, uh, and also for the third plot problem, this is something, some very active uh, problem in, in, in the theories. So I think Anne-Sophie is going to tell us something about this uh, later on today. But so let me go to, let me go back to, to, to this problem. And so let me state what, we, what we've proved. So for each of the 105 deformation families of three-dimensional funnel varieties, we determined whether or not the general member admits a Kähler Einstein metric. So this is just a summary. For 78 families, we prove that the general member admits a Kähler Einstein metric. And for 27 families, uh, no member admits a Kähler Einstein metric. And I should say that, okay, previously we, we did not do really the 105 uh, cases. So previously the 65 cases were already known. And so let me first uh, discuss what, the, what about the known cases. So the, they, were, they were known because there are many tools that were applied to certain situations that were available. For instance, in many of those, they have a non-reductive automorphism group. And then from uh, Matsushima's theorem, they cannot have a Kähler Einstein metric. Also, some, many of them are products. And for a product, uh, the product is Kähler Einstein if and only each, each factor is Kähler Einstein. So this is, again, easy to check. Also for toric varieties, there is a, there is a very simple uh, combinatorial uh, characterization of uh, K-poly stability or, or Kähler Einstein metric. So for toric varieties, X admits a Kähler Einstein metric or is K-poly stable, if and only if the barycenter of the corresponding uh, funnel polytope is at the origin. So from this, you can easily check that from the 18 uh, three-dimensional toric funnels, five have Kähler Einstein metric and 13 do not have a uh, Kähler Einstein metric. Also, there were some, uh, some known criteria for uh, cyclic covers and many of these funnels are cyclic covers and also for complex T1 T varieties. So these are complex T1 T varieties are varieties that admit a tor an action of a torus with co-dimension one. And so for those, they still have some combinatorial um, tools that you can use. And then again, there are some criteria for uh, to address this type of varieties. And also, um, Fujita had uh, previously done a classification of what he called the divisorially unstable funnel threefold. So let me say what a divisorial unstable means. So divisorial unstable means that you have some divisor, or some prime divisor that lives on, on X itself that violates the the uh, the Lee Fujita criteria. So criterion. So this is a remember. Like recall. I recall that uh, that the, the that um, Fujita Lee criterion said that a that X is K semi-stable if and only if uh, the uh, A is always greater or equal than the than than S. And so what Fujita did is he checked in the list. And he checked 
basically he looked for suspicious divisors on, on, on each of the funnel threefolds and, in, and he showed that uh, in 26 out of the 105 uh, funnels, you can find a divisor that, that lives on X that, uh, that violates the, the criterion. So this will be, this is what we call the visorium unstable. So, um, so this is the, the quote, you mean the quotient, the delta, the delta? Ah, yes, in this case, the divisor is on X, right, correct. Okay, so now, if you look at this number, 26 out of 105, let, let me go back to my main theorem. Uh, so we, I, in our theorem, we showed that 20, for 27 families, no member admits a killer isometric. So these were the 26 divisorially unstable. And there's one more family that is uh, the family in, in, the, in the more Mukai list is the family 226. Um, and so let me, I think I'm good on time. So let me, I want to show you how this actually, the, this is the easy part of the theorem to show when something does not admit the killer isometric or is not k polystable. The difficult part is really to show that they admit the killer isometric. But in any case, I want to, uh, I want to explain how we address this family 226. So the, the family, so we call it a family, but it's really, uh, it has only two members. And as I said, they are very, they're very explicitly described. So let me show you how we, we can describe this variety. So this, this variety, so this, this from the Mori Mukai list, when you see a two here, that means that it has Picard number two. So this has Picard number two, and it can be described in two ways. So let me just, uh, Right, so one way to describe this is that you can view this as a blow up of a cubic, uh, twisted cubic contained on a, on a smooth quadric. So they call this now uh, P. And also it will be important. So this, this, this cubic uh, rational, this uh, twisted cubic is contained in a unique uh, hyperplane class hyperplane section, let me call this uh, H. And this P is just the blow up of the twisted cubic. So this is one description. And another way to describe this same funnel variety is to view it as a blow up of uh, B5. So B5 is just uh, uh, the Grassmannian of two planes, the five dimensional space intersection with some co-dimension three linear subspace. And here, you can, uh, this has a line and then you can, the Q is just the blow up of the V5 along a line. So as I said, there are, this family has two members, basically there are two different types of lines or uh, equivalently two different types of H here. So let me, let me talk about first the, the line. So if you look at the, at the normal bundle of the line, in B5, it can be there are two types of lines in B5. So it can have a, you can have a trivial normal bundle, or there's also some special lines uh, whose normal bundle is uh, unbalanced. And uh, these ones will give me the first. Uh, the first member, X1, which is the, the, the more general member. And then this one will give me uh, the second member, X2. And now the autom one can compute the automorphism group of, this, uh, of these varieties. So let me, let me write here. So, so the automorphism group of X1, so let me let's see if I, I don't get this wrong. Okay, so I just to make my life easier. Let me just look at the um, 
connected components of the identity, and then this is just the GM. And, uh, and for the other member, this is, uh, I think this is non-reductive. Yeah, so this is the GM um, GA. And so from this, we see that this automorphism group is non-reductive, so, so X2 is, uh, is not Taylor-Einstein or not Cayley-Hollis table. And now uh, for the first one, and actually we can show more using Fujita-Li criterion, you can show that it's not even uh, K semi-stable. So it's not even a, uh, it's not even K semi-stable. And now let's look at the other, the other case X1. So in order to prove, we will prove that this is also not K polystable. And to prove this, actually, it's, it's better to look at the other, uh, to, to look at the other description. So from the description as the blow up of the quadric, you can distinguish this uh, X1 and X2. Uh, so we have X1 if, um, if the hyperplane section containing the twisted cubic is smooth. And we have X2 if this hyperplane section is just um, is singular. So it's a singular, it's going to be a singular uh, quadric. And now, um, <clears throat> so from this, I think I did something stupid here, but okay, sorry. Um, so from this, we can construct, from this, we can, um, we can do the following. So let's look at the following family of, uh, of uh, quadric. So we look at the, the family whose general member is a smooth quadric. And at the origin, we get a singular quadric with one a, a sing, a cone with one zero dimensional vertex. So this is, uh, let me call it a knot. And on each, in, on each family, I take uh, a curve C3, uh, a twisted cubic, so this is in this family. And now I can blow up this curve simultaneously. So I do a blow up of C3 clock uh, cross um, A1. And then what I get is the following. So I get uh, for in, in the, over the general point, I get exactly the blow up of Q at C3. So this is our X. And so, and at the special point, what we get is the blow up of this singular quadric at this curve. So we will get some singular. So this is a special test configuration. So this will be some X naught. Now this X naught is a, so this is a Q funnel. And it turns out that the automorphism group from the construction, one can check that the automorphism group of of X naught contains a, a torus of dimension two. So this is a complexity one P variety for which we have methods to check uh, K polystability. And so from these methods, from using this, this complexity one P varieties, uh, we can check that this one here is K polystable. So this X naught is K polystable. But now let's uh, let's let's see what this uh, what this gives us. So first of all, I told you that uh, that being semi-stable is a open condition. So because we got here this limit here that is k polystable, that means that x is k semi-stable. So this is follows from the openness of uh, k semi-stability. So this is k semi-stable. But I also told you the uniqueness of k polys table limits. So this will show us that this one cannot be k polys table because it degenerates into something else that is already k polys table. So this is k semi stable, but not uh, k polys table. And so this is how we show, so this is our x one. So this is how we show that uh, this 
in this remaining case, we do not have a uh, kehler einstein metric. But as I said, uh, this, is the, this is really the, the easiest part of the proof. And uh, of course, I don't have time to tell you much about the, the, the hard part, but let me just mention uh, some of the tools that we use to prove uh, K power stability. So first of all, as I said, we have this, uh, this uh, the Fujita Lee evaluative criterion. So this is the, if we, so we want to prove, if we want to prove that something is K here, I put something stronger. So I want to, if I want to prove that something is K stable, I have to check uh, that this condition holds for every prime divisor over, over X. Um, and so let me define the, the, so one can define the stability threshold which is the, the infimum over all prime divisors E over X of this quotient. And we want to prove that this is, if you want to prove that something is K stable, we want to prove that this is, this is greater than one. And of course, this is in principle, you would have to check it for all prime divisors on E, but in fact, there are, there are tools to estimate this uh, stability threshold. So, uh, Aban Zhuang developed a very powerful theory called the theory of admissible flags that allow us to estimate this uh, stability threshold. And also something that I have not mentioned is that all this uh, evaluative criteria, they have equivariant uh, versions of it. Meaning that if you have, if you know the automorphism group of your, uh, of your fun of variety X, uh, then often it is enough to check, to compute this invariance for, um, for divisors that are invariant with respect to this, to this group. And having this, and having the fact that K stability is an open condition, what we do is we, we explore symmetries. So if we want to prove that a general member of a family is K polystable, is to show, it's enough to show that one member is K polystable. But then what we often do is we, ch we, we choose a member that has a very big automorphism group. And often the, the families will have some special members with more symmetries. And for those, it is easier to estimate those invariants just because we have only to check um, sub variety. We, we only have to worry about sub varieties that are, uh, that are uh, equivariant with respect to the, to the, to the automorphism, to the action of the automorphism group. So this is more or less uh, the, the tools that we use. And uh, so thank you, for, uh, ah, this is the book. So this was, <laughs> so this, all this work was, uh, was, uh, was ended up not in a paper, but it was too much work. So it was in this book that just came out. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>